Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders Podcast and the Student Body Right Podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Hey, welcome everybody to another glorious episode of the Put On Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, along with Ryan Holmes, and we are podcasting on the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's it's a great night. It's nice. It's a nice night outside. Um, you know, want to grill, sit, sit there and chill. Maybe you want to pop up some stogies. Um, the season's over a long time ago, but they just create ways to make this look like the dumpster fire that it actually is. And it's just whether it's the offense not doing anything until late in the second quarter against you know the, the Colts here, um, or it's Patrick Graham. You know, sending blitzes from Reno. Um, it's it's gonna it's it's been pretty bad. Um, Dwayne Douglas here with Ryan Holmes, trying to recap the Raiders' twenty-five to twenty loss. Um, Ryan, you want to go ahead and um, put a <laughs> say anything about what's going on? I, here? <laughs> I can't say we're surprised after watching the way this team has played all season. Like it, this wasn't a layup. We talked about it on the preview. I had them winning on a last second field goal. I think that I talked you into actually choosing the Colts yeah. uh, based on their defense in this game. And clearly early on, Gus Bradley had the number to, to slow down this offense. And you heard the commentators on TV say that Doug, Gus Bradley um, just wanted to get after Derek Carr a little bit, get him a little bit rattled. And he started off 0 for 5. Uh, everyone contributed in this game. The defense clearly had lapses. The offense had the ball again late, couldn't do it. The coaching in this game, um, I I thought I was watching a preseason game. It was literally the most basic stuff you could run, handoff, screen, check down, screen, swing pass, screen, handoff, like nothing down the field, uh, nothing explosive. Did we even get into 11 personnel in this game until late? It was literally base offense that, that you installed day one of training camp. They got, they didn't get Devontae Adams involved until the second half, really, um, Derek Carr picked it up um, as the game went on, but then at the get at the end couldn't finish the defense. The offense gave him the lead, and it took two plays for them to give up a touchdown. And Darian Butler, I don't know what you were doing, fall on the football. If he just falls on that fumble, they probably win this game. There wasn't anyone within five yards of him. Um, he looked like he had no idea what he was supposed to do and didn't recover the fumble. And lo and behold, the defense gives up a touchdown on the next play ball game so um this team's not coached very well they don't play very well they don't play for each other um they clearly don't play for the head coach and then you saw the way you know josh mcdaniels got up there in the press conference afterwards it's on me Uh, we're back to the it's on me phase of raider nation um and year one that's unacceptable and then Derek carr to get up there was basically in tears um i appreciate the passion he has for raider nation but it's year nine Derek. And at some point you are the leader in that locker room. You're the longest guy here. Like if there's issues in the locker room, that is prop that is on you as well. Like take care of it. Um, Stop pointing fingers and take care of internally. And to me, he was pointing out some players who clearly aren't all in here, but I think it's also, he's pointing fingers at the coaching staff as well without naming the coaching staff. So to me, this is 2017 all over again. We've seen this, like we're going to sit here and question for the rest of year. What the hell happened? Derek Carr's now been part of this twice in his career, so we can't overlook that. But I do appreciate the passion Derek Carr had at the podium after the game. Um, is it the same the same coaching staff that he he and his brother begged for this offseason? All right, I mean they they, they, yeah. they, they they wanted they wanted this whole this whole offseason was a Carr concoction. Let's get Waller paid. Let's get Devontae paid. Let's get um get, let's get Renfro paid. Let's do all these things, and none of it worked. And it's on y'all. I mean, I, I have no idea. I have no idea how else to say it. No, I don't know. No, no other way to convey it. Like they have been, he's been god awful. And you can't play fifteen minutes out of a football game, starting at the quarterback position, and expect to win. Like you just, you just, it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way, cousin. Like it, it's no way, it's no way that could take place. And you could say to yourself, okay, and then go on this, and go on the podium and cry. You know. 
I, I grew up a big sports fan. I, obviously, we're, we're, we're both we're, we're very big sports fans. And I was a, I was a, I first started watching baseball back in the day. I always heard about the '86 World Series, right? So I watched it. So I watched the '86 World Series, watched the whole thing, and I'll never forget the emotion of Wade Boggs in the dugout crying. And I said, you know what? That's all good. He just lost the World Series in the most dramatic po way possible. I mean, like it, it was horrible the way he lost that World Series. You can't lose the way week we nine. Won, week, week <laughs> nine and then start crying. This is almost like little league, like football. Like, I mean, keep your emotions intact. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm I am not anti men crying, but there's a time and a place. And like, that is not, it's, it's ridiculous. Even on he it's year nine and it's like first guy, not open. Forget about it. Like it's, 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 that can't be the same thing. Even on the touchdown pass to, the, the attempt or a touchdown pass to um, Devontae Adams. Um, if he just looks, it just looks at um, 87 is wide open. Like for Frost Moreau is wide open and it's a first down and the drive continues. Like, I mean, like it, it, instead of just like trying to, I mean, like, and then the, who, who, the, the deep pass, the in, in quadruple coverage to Devontae, like somebody's not, somebody else isn't open on that play. It wasn't a one man route. I mean, like it's time that it's, he, he's not, listen, I'm not going to make this a referendum on Derek. We, we all know what Derek is. I'm not going to say everything is on Derek, on Derek, on Derek, but he is the quarterback. He is the highest paid, uh, the highest paid Raider. You play quarterback in this position and you have the record that he has. You're the head coach of this team and you have the record you have. It is fair for everybody to come after you. It's just fair. I mean, there's no other way. To, this is about, this is about, you cannot, a man once said, you cannot be a success in professional football unless you're winning. I wonder who said that. That was the, my, the guy who said that was Al motherfucking Davis. Yeah, it, 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 we're, we're again at the, at the point where they didn't lose this game because Derek Carr. They clearly didn't win this game because of Derek Carr. And, and he's showing us who he is. And, and we've talked about this at length. Like, I still, he's a solid game manager, but you're not going to win without the, all the other stuff around him. And clearly they don't have that. Uh, my, my point is, is this was a team that went to the playoffs and they had expectations of going to an AFC championship game when they built this roster in the offseason. Clearly they, they overestimated a lot of this roster as a new regime. Um, but let's stop acting like this is the 2014 Derek Carr's rookie year when Dennis Allen <laughs> was here and they had literally no one on this roster when he was throwing to, to Rod Streeter and, and, James Jones at the end of his career and they had no offensive line. Like, this team has some talent. I'm not going to say they don't, they don't have a ton, but there's enough here to compete. We're just asking them to compete and they're not really doing that. And, and all the people that are saying, well, they're, they've lost six uh, close games, like give them another year. They may get better. I, and I understand yeah. it, but every game in the NFL is a one score game pretty much at this point. So like that excuse is out the window. Um, this game to me was more on the defense as an inability to just stop this Colts team that basically hasn't scored in months. And literally Matt Ryan was doing whatever he wanted to do. Matt Ryan had a 40 yard run in this game. Like it, it might take him an hour to run 40 yards. And he literally just got out the pocket and ran. And I don't know what Rocky sin was doing on that play. It looked like he was doubling the crosser, had no vision on the quarterback. And literally Matt Ryan went running by him and like, they couldn't run him down from behind. This is Matt Ryan probably runs like a seven, eight second us uh, 40 yard dash at this point. But um, I, I, to me, this is more of an indictment on Pat, uh, Patrick Graham than anything, the way this game went, like they didn't blitz Matt Ryan. They didn't get creative. They didn't get any pressure on him. They're doing the same rushes they've done all year that haven't worked. Chandler Jones didn't show up. Malcolm Coons, where was he? Tayshaun Bauer got some snaps. Well, all Nichols, I, I don't know where he's at. Max Crosby at some point Patrick Graham needs to stop doing these stunts where Max Crosby is trying to work back to the middle of the line and work underneath the defense or around the defensive tackle he's your best guy he's the only guy that's going to win outside one-on-one -on -one against the right tackle so having him smash up into the, the b gap or the a gap into double coverage does absolutely nothing um a lot of soft zone like you want Matt Ryan to throw the ball down that he has no arm at this point in his career make him throw the ball over the top it, don't let him check down and throw the five to 10 yard intermediate stuff. That's been the Raiders problems for years. Do you want to talk about why this defense sucks? Because they can't stop the pass from zero to 10 yards. They haven't done it for years. Mm -hmm. And these defensive coordinators are so scared to get beat over the top 
They're just letting these teams that literally the only thing Indianapolis wants to do is throw the ball in the five to 10 yard area yeah. and run the football. And they just let them do it. Imagine. Yes. Another week, I mean, but they didn't take away what the other team wants to do. And then exactly. And then, I mean, you got to, I mean, they have no speed on the outside. So I know you have a situation where you're playing some young corners, whatever, whatever, but like there's no speed on the outside. So you got to bang these guys at the line of scrimmage. I mean, you cannot just let people just free, like, the, like you're, like you're in the red zone, so there's no more over the top. Okay, you're in the pre-red zone. You're like the 30, 30 yard line. I think they were on like I think they were like maybe on the 30, 40 yard line on the Paris. Or was it Paris? What's his name again? Paris. He just Campbell. Ran, Paris Campbell. He just runs a slant and then yeah. runs away from everybody without anybody touching him. I mean, you, we're, we're, this is football. Like I don't want. It's not seven on seven. Like I mean, you got you got to be able to you got to be able to make something happen there. Um, and you know maybe. He, Maybe he needs a defensive tackle because, like, he's not – Max Crosby's not Leonard Williams. So I'm putting him in, pop, pop, putting him inside. He's inside all the time. Yeah. Like, 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 what's going on with that? That makes absolutely no sense. And I don't understand, like, I watched I watched Arizona play – and that's college football. I watched Arizona play UCLA last night. And, like, they were able to upset UCLA for a lot of reasons. But one was every time UCLA made a little bit of a run, they had a great drive starter. Like j- just to play that, like you know, they. It, 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 I mean, it's, it's called. You see that they're really good coordinators, um, have like great drive starters. So boom, they they get six, seven yards, or maybe even a first down. God forbid, a first down on first down is is is, is not possible with um Josh McDaniels. But like that right there is like that's those things like that get things going offensively for your team, and they, and they and they just can't do any of that. And it, it's it's just it's just beyond frustrating. I wanted Patrick Graham here. I, I just, he just, I'm not saying he's not deserving of being a coach in the league, but it ain't working here. Like whatever he's trying to do, it, 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 it doesn't work. And the fact that he has no, I thought these, I thought these guys had self scouting. I thought they were, I thought during the break, they have a self state. They, they assess themselves and say what, 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 what they did wrong, what they did right. And they come back and fix it in the second half of the season. You're doing the same exact thing over and over and over again. And expecting a, a, a different result. Like you cannot blitz from, that much depth, it, the ball's gonna be out before then, before you, before your guy even even, had a, even has a chance to get to the quarterback. So what is the, what the hell are you doing? I I, I don't understand. It's just, it's unbelievable. They don't even have to blo- the the offense doesn't even have to account for him in the blocking scheme because he's never gonna get there. Never gonna get um, there. My thing is, I'm glad you know a bit of sarcasm for those listening because I know it's hard to pick up sarcasm, but I'm glad they got rid of Jonathan Abram because he was clearly the problem on this defense. Yes. Um. Clearly, that solved everything. And Jonathan, Hank, and Jonathan Hankins, thank God they got rid of him. Thank God. So I'm just looking, I'm just trying to read the tea leaves here. Um, they basically put two guys in IR. They put Waller and Renfro in IR, who we knew were kind of dinged up, but like these aren't four week injuries. Clearly, there there is a little bit of tanking going on here, let's be honest. And then to look at the inactives, Cleveland Farrell, a healthy scratch. He's been one of their better defensive linemen this year. He could play inside, outside, and stop the run. Um, Neil Farrell Jr. has been playing really well the last two weeks inside. One of their draft picks, he mysteriously shows up on the uh, inactive list. Then you have Matthew Butler, another draft pick on the uh, inactive list. This was a team that you knew the Colts were going to try to establish a run with Jonathan Taylor. So what do they do? No, Denzel Perriman, he was he was hurt. We can live with that. But why is Cleveland Farrell, Neil Farrell, and Matthew Butler not playing in this game unless they were injured? And I know the reporters asked Josh McDaniels about it, and he said, he was going to keep it internal, so he was he didn't want to reveal oh, why oh, those guys were inactive. Dude, but dude, come on, dude. you have to stop the run here. You're playing rookie linebackers out there, and you basically are taking the big guys off the field. Like they had no chance to stop the run today, and clearly, um, Jonathan Taylor with that big run basically flipped the game there in the third quarter. Dude, seeing seeing those clips of that game and watching. Um, whatever his name is, Parker Lewis can't lose. Whatever his name is, the guy, the guy, the, the offensive, the offensive. Most, most of our audience won't get that reference. <laughs> yeah, but I that's fine. But, <laughs> but but watching that offensive um room just cheer up and down at, at every play when all they're running is preseason. I thought I was watching a preseason game on both sides it, of the ball it, for 60 minutes. It was not. It was. It was like. I mean, I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. And like this whole thing about. Mark Davis went into the locker room like, for what? Like, like if you're not firing nobody, don't go in the locker room. Like, I mean, it, 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 this is like if he if he survives this week, then that's Mark Davis. That's that's your head coach for your nation for a long time. Because well, what, what if he loses to Denver next week? Oh, they're losing. To, they're not beating Denver next week. Not, not the way this offense is playing. I hate to break no. it to you. If they 
they're not scoring 20 points against that Denver defense with the way they're playing right now. And then, and then you have, um, you know, Denver's only scored like what? I watched Denver. They scored, they scored 10 points today. Um, good job by Vrabel. Should be coach of the year. I mean, the, the guy's amazing. But um, they always score 10 points, 13 points in the game. I guarantee, I guarantee they score 26 to 27 points against the Raiders in this game. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And you think Josh Jacobs is going to have like that, you know, 200 yard rushing uh, attack, uh, 200 yards rushing game against the Broncos again? That's not happening again. So it's the Colts be, uh, gave up nine sacks last week, and the Raiders hit him one time. <laughs> they have any sacks today? They had one, right? Crosby one. had one. Yeah, and that was on a, I think, a third and one play action where he kind of got flushed and turned back. But I get it. Last week there was a rookie quarterback or a young guy in Ellinger making one of his first starts, and and clearly the game plan today with the immobile statue of the ghost that used to be Matt Ryan was standing in the pocket and getting rid of the ball quickly, which again, I don't know why they weren't playing man and getting up on these guys and making tight window throws, why they're playing so much zone and dropping off. And um, I, I think some of these guys still think they're playing for Gus Bradley where they're, they're dropping into zones or into spaces on the field instead of like man match drop where they're trying to find receivers that are coming into their area. Cause I, 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 I could call plays against this Raider defense and I would just basically call hitches and, and hooks all day and curls because no one's going to cover them. It, yeah. It's a free five to seven yards on every play. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I, 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 I don't under, I don't understand. Like, do you, I don't get like how you can just give up those free yards and not force somebody to throw the football down the field against you. Like don't have to force them to do that. Like that's not a guaranteed easy play, especially if you, are able to give Max Crosby a little bit of, you know, a, a couple of heartbeats away from getting to the quarterback. Like, it's just, it's just common sense. I mean, I, like, I'm the guy who I was actually bench would be, I mean, I'm playing Farrell. I'm playing Farrell. I'm playing um, to Sean Bauer, Sean Bauer, and I'm sitting, I'm telling Chandler Jones, you can take a healthy scratch this week. Like, what, like, what am I doing? What, what am I doing with healthy? What am I doing with him? And then did, um, I'm looking at the Raiders stats. Did, um, did, What's his name? Did oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, here Zaire White had his two carries for negative one yards. Oh, yeah. So why did we? Why did Britton Brown dress today? What was the reason? Special teams, I would guess, just bodies because they had, and unless there was injuries to Farrell and Butler that they didn't really announce, and I think I think Farrell was questionable either this week or last week, but yeah. um, I didn't. There was no indication that he was going to miss this game. Um, Chandler Jones had one tackle uh, and one assist, so he's credited with two tackles. Bauer, uh, one assist. Um, but there was no pressure, none, like on Matt Ryan. And Crosby led the team with 10 tackles. He had a sack, he had a quarterback kid, he had a tackle for less. He was the only guy that showed up on defense today. Um, the tweet you the said, other interesting thing is we heard a lot about how they're going to start playing younger guys. So, you know, I was getting excited. Okay, here comes Masterson. Yeah. Um, Sam Webb got a lot of run. Um, but then I look over to the offensive side, and I see this number 84 getting a ton of snaps who can't return punts and has been dropping everything all year. And wondering, where is DJ Turner? Like, he was active. I don't know if he got a snap on offense. I do not remember seeing him. On I think the field. he. I, I think he did. It was after. Did you see the play where another Josh McDaniel special? Let's have a trick play. Another trick play. He, uh, the trick play to Devontae Adams. Did you see that one? The pass where he scored it out, and they called holding on Illuminor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I believe um, when when Devontae stormed off the field <laughs> and just sat down. All right. uh, I, I think that Turner came back in that, in that game, but that was, that was, I mean, that play right there showed you like how much, how, how incredibly great Devontae Adams is to get a first down on that play only to have it come back, of course, um, um, for, for the Raiders. I, I think, think I texted you. I, I'm waiting for him to come up with a mysterious injury to go on IR at this point, like yeah, put him in so. bubble wrap, make sure that he's healthy week one. The last thing they need right now is Devontae Adams. ACL. Uh, to, to suffer a knee injury or something that's going to cause him to miss time at the beginning of next year. This year is over. Yeah. Um, clearly with the, the emotion that was coming out of the locker room after the game. And we all, we've all saw this, saw this coming weeks ago, but they're two and seven. Um, I think to Sean Reed, someone asked about mention the word playoffs in the press conference. And I know we kind of have a, a saying here, like we can't talk about playoffs till they're 500. I don't know why someone asked about the playoffs, but kind of mentioned can he keep the locker room now knowing the playoffs are basically not going to happen but they're not going to happen so um, they need Adams on the field I think because they don't have Waller and Renfro but um, I'd like to see a little bit more DJ Turner I'd like to see more than Zamir White in the defense knows he's going to get the ball and they're running the same plays they run with Zamir White 
the entire site. He must only know two or three plays in the playbook because that's all they call when he's He must be field. really dumb. He must be really dumb from yeah. Georgia. Like, I mean, like, you know, I mean, I, Kirby Smart him, must – Get him involved. I, I don't get it. I don't get I don't, I don't understand that. Just hand him the ball. Just hand the ball off. Like, just, just give it – just give it to him. And I'm also um, – Brown, give him the ball. Like, I'm, I'm just – like, it's over. Like, even if you're – even if you're um, Josh Jacobs, I mean – like we we everybody he, he's put enough on tape where he's gonna he's gonna be on another he's team. Gonna next year. Yeah. He's gonna get paid. He's he's gonna get paid next year. No need to like bang your head against this wall for, for this franchise who is not going anywhere. Um, and you know Mark Davis, I'll just say this, and maybe at the end of the end of the day, maybe next maybe this year next this year next time we'll all look stupid, and they'll be winning games next year and whatever whatever the record will be reversed. But like I said, I, I don't ever feel like he ever does a real coaching search. I think he zero ins on a guy, um, and he and, and he, I think he let McKenzie pick pick, pick um, Dennis Allen. Then he because he was from Hayward or Stockton, and had for had Raider ties, he won Del Rio. Then when then 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 he didn't want Del Rio, he won a Gruden, and then he just said, hey, I want Josh McDaniels. Uh, I think maybe this time around, next time, just do a real coaching search because this is just. You can't get worse than this. I mean, this is this is like you actually you can because because they will be. But you're so close to being you're so you're very close to getting number one pick. Um, I think that it's you have a chance to take to take one of the top two quarterbacks in the league, top top two quarterbacks in college football. I would say at this point, don't screw it up. I mean, like you don't screw it up by winning games. Like it's over, it's done with. I don't care how much Derek cries. I don't care how much anybody does. The, the motion's out of this team. They'll play. I mean, like, like just at least. I mean, I could. Say, just watching some of these run after the catches by Demonte Adams, it's like it feels like such a waste in so many ways because it, 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 cause it's for him the season has never been over in week ten, but it's just it's it's horrible to watch um, this whole thing the whole thing fall apart and like you said in a text to me, um, it's Crosby and it's Adams and everybody anybody else can go. Yeah, I, I feel bad for Josh Jacobs. He's playing his heart out. He, he's running into walls. He's making extra yards. He's doing everything he can. Yeah. Yes. And at this point, he got another 20, 27 touches. Like, if I was him, like, I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm a free agent. You guys haven't taken care of me. You know, let's 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 go 15 touches. Let's get these young guys involved. Josh Jacobs does not need to get a major injury or prove anything else this year. Mm-hmm. Um, let the younger guys get some carries and develop. Keep Jacobs fresh. If the Raiders want to bring him back, great. My question to you would be, and I know you mentioned – quarterbacks in the next draft and that we're going to have a whole off season to talk about those. But yeah. Are you, the, are you going to really let Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels make that selection? Because if you do, if they do go in the draft and take a quarterback and Josh McDaniels and Ziegler are still here, you, you have to be all in for at least three years with those guys. You have to believe that they are the right guys. What have they done? That's been positive. That's proven to you that they can be the right guys. Cause I haven't seen anything. I haven't. And, and that's my point. And that's the reason why after today, whether it's at the end of the season, um, to me, I'm a little bit, I'm a little vindictive when it comes to this stuff. Like, like when, when, when it came to like Antonio Brown, I just let him sit on the, I let him sit on the side, I keep him signed, and he ain't playing for nobody. He, he, he's not getting a ring. He, he ain't getting a ring um, when he signed to play for me. I'm gonna let him destroy his actual record as a head coach this year. Um, I'm gonna walk up and walk him in the office and say, I want to see Stidham. I want, I want this to be as bad as possible. Because you went through this whole off season, and you wasted my time with empty promises, and you didn't and money. do and money. I I paid you. I don't. I mean, like he has enough money to he has enough money to he's buying and WNBA but the WNBA teams like he like he the move from Oakland to Vegas has been very lucrative for um for Mark Davis. So what I would do in that situation is I would let him just ride out the season. He'll probably go back to New England be the offensive coordinator. Because they've been, you know, not been great um, in that situation, and I'm gonna go hire. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hire a new head coach, um, and, and and that's it. I'm gonna hire a new head coach, hire a new GM, hire a new DC, all that stuff like that. And if I gotta pay you, oh well, I pay you. That's just the way to. The, the, that's the way it works. But I'm not. I am personally not sitting here um, watching this no more. I, Do you I, think I, Ziegler could possibly fire McDaniel's for Mark Davis and retain the GM job? Absolutely not. So you're gonna have, and, and my point would being the worst thing this franchise could do, and we're we're at the bottom here. We're we're in the Jamarcus Russell days right now. Yes. Um, the worst thing they can do is keep McDaniel's and Ziegler 
draft a rookie quarterback and decide after next season that they need to move on from the coach. If they're going to do it, they got to do this. Year. Start over. You have so, to align the quarterback, the GM, yeah. and the coach together. Because if you if you bring in a rookie quarterback and they don't have success year one, which they probably won't with a rookie quarterback, let's be honest. Um, you can't turn around and then fire McDaniel's and Ziegler after the first year of a rookie quarterback. You have to give that quarterback at least two, if not three years with the same coach. Um, by the way, props to our boy, Justin Fields, who looks like the quarterback <laughs> we thought he was going to be as QB two. Um, just throw that in there, but you have to give them, you cannot, cause then you're going to destroy the quarterback. Cause if you're going to take a guy in the top five of the first round, yeah. you have to keep the front office intact. So I would lean what you're saying. If they are convinced they need to go that route. And again, this isn't an indictment of Derek. It's all Derek Carr's fault, hundred percent of the fault. Well, he is not the biggest problem on this team, but he's clearly not the answer either. Um, mm-hmm. So um, at some point they need to make a decision and if you're going to start over. I would absolutely. And, and as much as I want to keep continuity, keep the same coaches around, okay. keep that, keep everything in the building moving in one direction. They, they had a playoff team last year and they basically dropped a giant bomb on it. And it's clear that this locker room, as much as they want to say in the press, how much they love Josh McDaniel and other coaches, they're not executing the game plan. And, and at the same time, these players aren't playing for them. Um, I'm not going to say that the Q word, I don't think they've quit yet, but you can tell they they're flat in every game. Mm-hmm. They don't come out with any purpose. They, they almost got shut out for the entire first half again. Um, yeah. This offense can't move the ball. If they want to move the ball, it's like molasses. It's a 15 play drive, seven minutes. They play, this team can't play at the pace they play on offense with how bad their defense is um, and vice versa. But then on the defense, I, Patrick Graham, I was on. I was on board too. He has to go. If if they keep McDaniel's and Ziegler, Graham still has to go. This defense, it's 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 getting into the Paul Gunther territory with how bad they're playing and how how easily they're just picked apart. Yeah, and, and never never ever ever do, does anybody struggle. Everybody has their best game. Um, you know, and and it's, everybody has their best game against the Raiders um, defensively, and like nothing is taken away. Like you cannot. Be a bet. You can't be like a break, break defense. You have to be something has to work. Like on the first drive, I get it. Swing pass to to, to um out, out to right out, out to the right side to um to um to the big running back and you Taylor, ha- yeah. Taylor and Rocky Sin has to make. I mean that play is like I can't that that's the one play in the game where I'm like okay I really can't fault Patrick Graham on that play because. I can't fault them for the whole drive for, for letting, letting them be in the red zone and the and team can't score. But on that plays like that, like they're going to they're gonna kick a field goal in that situation. Also, I didn't even see the last drive of the half. Like when the Raiders, when the Raiders score, it seemed like how much time was left. How much, how much time was left in the, in I think the there was 58 seconds and two timeouts, but they were in midfield in like three plays. It I mean, it's right like away. not even, not even, not even a single negative play. Like not even a single, like you know, in a, in a incompletion. A brother can't get an incompletion. Like I mean, at, at any point ever. Like that's crazy. I mean, that's that's crazy. I mean, they were zero and fourteen. I think I think the week before on third down. On, so third, some, down. on third down. Different never, quarterback. Different quarterback. Yeah, but but Matt Ryan wasn't Matt Ryan wasn't great on third down this year either. So, um, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna read you. The Colts offensive stats for the game. And by the way, they scored 25, they missed the field goal, and they fumbled in the red zone. This team easily should have scored 31, if not more. Um, the Colts had 20 first downs. They were 6 of 11 on third down. They had 415 yards. They averaged 7 yards of play. They had 207 yards rushing uh, with on 30 carries, which is 6.9 yards a carry. Obviously, the 66-yard run helps, but they weren't stopping them outside of that. Uh, they had 208 yards passing. They were 21 of 28. They were only sacked one time. Uh, they were three of five in the red. Uh, those are kickoffs. Uh, red zone, one of two. Um, so they scored when they got down. And I think the only one they didn't score was the sack by Crosby. Um, they they didn't make it hard at all. Like they were a speed bump in the road for a dismal Colts team. So I've given the defense some passes this year. Um, today, it was on the defense. Let's acknowledge the offense didn't do anything really in the first half, and, it, and they had a chance at the end. They couldn't do it. But um, with the way they were playing, I'm convinced if if Carr does score there, if they had a Foster Moreau catches that ball, which he probably should have in, in the end zone. I know it was tight coverage. He bobbled it, and the guy knocked it out. But I'm not convinced that they're even stopping the Colts from going down and kicking a field goal to win the game anyways. They, they were playing. 
This was literally like watching the third stringers play in preseason for 60 minutes. Yeah, and then if that's the case, that's some pretty high, um, high priced third, third string players on, yeah. on, on this roster. Um, there were third string players in the game. I saw yeah. a lot of Teamer, Webb, um, Sidney Jones was out there like right away in the slot. Yeah. We just picked him up a couple of days ago. Luke Masterson was out there. Butler was out there. I felt Pickers bad. For, was out there. Yeah, I, I, was out there. I felt bad for Webb because I thought he made a great play on Pittman to get that fumble, and I thought it was a great play. And then and and he didn't get no reward on it because I'm not sure what. Uh, maybe he learned that from her from from her, from Herm Edwards. I have no idea what what, what the situation on the, on that one was. Um, if you were in charge, uh, uh, these guys coming back next year. Yeah. Um, I got asked that question on Twitter. I think it's a little early. Um. I'm leaning no, just because it's not like the coaching staff is like coached well and like they put these players in position and we can blame the players 100%. I think the coaching staff is actually getting worse. Go back to the preseason where we were all talking about how well this team was coached. Yeah. They're getting worse every week. The Raiders are yeah. not good situationally. The penalties are going the wrong direction. Missed tackles. Um, how hard is it for them to get a first down at some times? How hard is it to get across midfield? They can't stop anybody. The special teams is just okay. Like, thank God they have Cole and Carlson. But wh- where on this team, other than Josh Jacobs and Max Crosby, can you point to? And Devontae Adams that has been pretty good this year. What are they good at? Like, there's no identity. Like, it's a it's a mess. So, like, I, as much as I don't want to move on from the coaching staff, like, I would at this point, if they keep playing like this and they keep getting worse, and this team wins four games, you almost have to. Like, yeah. um, I. Yeah. Because if, if that happens, I think they blow it up and they go get a rookie quarterback. And I don't want a rookie quarterback to have to face like a must win on the coaching staff. Because if they win four or five games with a rookie quarterback the next year, they're going to move on from McDaniels and you're back at square one. So um, I, I, I tore up my Raider. I bet over eight and a half wins this year. I thought it was the layup. I basically tore that up today and threw it in the trash. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, um, it's, <sighs> I, I never would. I never would have. I mean, it's and you mentioned you mentioned them getting worse and worse and worse. It, it, it like there's not even there's nothing. Number one, I mean Matt 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 Hollins. Can we get? Can I get somebody else? Can can we just try somebody else at that position? Can I just see? You mentioned you mentioned DJ Turner. Can we just get? Can we just uh, give me a street wide receiver at this point? Like I don't. I, I just can't. I can't see him. I, What's I, Isaiah I, Zuber doing? Like, like seriously, like I want to see any, I want to see anybody besides this. This is is absolutely ridiculous. Um, as far as that goes, Zuber can play safety too. He had an interception in the preseason, so he maybe did. a two way guy. I'm, I'm joking, but um, they don't have anyone else. Who are you gonna run out there? Albert Wilson, um, DJ Turner should absolutely be playing in the slot over Keenan Cole or Keelan Cole. I think that's pretty obvious at this point. But at, at that point, you got to get creative. You got to put you know, 11 personnel out there. You got to spread them out. At this point, just spread them out and, and let Carr move the ball. Like, what is the point of continuing to get into 21 personnel and try to pound the rock or play action, run two-man routes? Like, what is the point? It worked for a couple of weeks, but it, we're going on week like six of this same game plan. Yeah, I mean, if like, there's, you're not going to get a chance to sabotage this season this much. I mean, like, dude, like you coached over, his record is now what? 13 and or whatever his record is he's like 12 games under right um like you lost to jeff saturday man like i'm even if jeff saturday espn jeff saturday even if even if even if like your plan was to like okay fine we're just gonna whatever whatever like try to tank the season like you gotta you gotta win the, the jeff saturday game and after that you can tank like you can't you can't you can't lose a jeff saturday game like that and, and like for patrick graham like like, dude, this kid is a 30-year-old nobody who's going to be, like, somebody's, like, he was getting coffee two weeks ago. Getting coffee two weeks ago, and you, and he came in your building and beat you? Like, and beat you up. Like, five, almost 500 yards of offense, running the simplest, like, little plays. I mean, like, nothing that was, like, okay, wow. Like, we're going to look at all 22 and just be shocked and then see how good they were. Like, that's, that's, that was, that's the quarterback, dude. Like, I mean, that's the OC who beat you. Like they're they're on the verge of not coaching the league no more. Like I mean, this is like really bad. Like you can't even talk about how bad this is. And then for Derek, like I I do like again the passion. I do respect. Like like I like I have respect for Derek Carr. Sometimes it sometimes it doesn't sound that way, but I do have respect for Derek Carr. I do. 
But at the end of the day, you're the quarterback. You're getting paid the big bucks. Like you're doing all like like you're the guy who everybody is like the you the jerseys on everything like that. Like at some point, like you either gotta just you gotta you gotta come harder with with as far as leadership goes. Like you crying at like a two and seven press conference, like like I just we we can't we just can't you you can't have it you can't have it. It it, it doesn't it doesn't look good on you. It doesn't look good on the team. It makes the team look like it's fragile as hell and. Um, it, it probably is, but like it, it looks really bad in every single way, and I'm just disappointed that this season has gone to this level. Um, for him not to even be in those, in those six game situations, as bad as they were defensively, in those six game situations where they could have won the game, you to to not even be fi- just be 500. Like like we're not even asking for you to be like to win every single one of those games. I mean, you know, it, it happens, but like to not go at least 500 in that situation, it just shows you that there is you're solid but like there's nothing there's nothing special about next level nothing top 10 i don't hear top 10 anymore about Derek carr like and and it's, it's just that simple. you haven't been on twitter in the last hour then because i'm still seeing it yeah i mean like i mean i'm watching I, they compare them to they, they compare them to kirk cousins all right and i'm watching kirk cousins throw balls to justin jefferson like where like those contested balls that we that we that we want him to throw to Devontae Adams where it's one on one and it's just him and the, him and the defender and just give the guy a chance as instead of throwing the ball way out of bounds. Like like Cousins is throwing his Cousins is throwing those balls in the area where Jefferson can make those plays, and Carr never Carr never does that to to, to Devontae. And you saw it at the end of the Jacksonville game throwing the ball out of bounds on on second and two. On third and two, fourth and two, like it, it, it just, you just can't get that done. And um, if, if if you're still out there and you're still talking about like top ten, whatever, whatever, I can find a stats do lie. I can I can I can find a stat for anybody who I want to who, who I want to uplift. Um, you know, so it, it is what it is. Yeah, there's a couple that come to mind. I think Derek Carr that said on the broadcast the worst completion percentage in the NFL in the red zone, thirty seven percent. Um, and then I think last last week, I think it was, he was 30th out of 34 quarterbacks and completion percentage in the fourth quarter in overtime. Um, but I'm not here to bash Derek Carr uh, this week. I think Me the either. defense was, was, I think the defense was awful. Um, I would have liked to see more than 20 points against this Colts team, but you know, the game plan that he, he did with Josh again is one of this week, throw screens, get the ball to the running back. Clearly that was a focus um, because the running backs had, like 12 targets in this game between Abdul and Jacobs. Um, I do want to point out, I did put out a clip on Twitter about from Bull Durham where they're in the locker room. The coach <laughs> is talking about lollygaggers. And, and um, a lot of people took it the wrong way and they're responding. It's not McDaniel's job to motivate the team, blah, blah. Yeah, it was funny. It was more about that. I can't believe, you know, how do we win eight? I can't believe we won eight. It's a miracle. And um, this game is simple. Like that was the motivation behind it. Like yeah. you throw the ball, you catch the ball, you tackle the guy, like, this is an easy game when you break it down. Um, and I think a lot of people are trying to find little clips within that minute and a half video and try to, you know, point out like different things. Uh, it was fun in games. It was, they just, you know, tackle the guy, throw the ball, catch the ball, block the guy. I can't believe we won two games. That was the basis behind it. And I know it's dark times on Raider nation, but sometimes people on Twitter just take everything way too seriously. Yeah. There was a, I mean, Eric Harris, I, 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 I with a new, with a, with a new Twitter, um, former Raider Eric Harris. I had to click on it to make sure it was actually Eric Harris because with the way new Twitter is, it could be anybody. Um, but he so said like new Coke. <laughs> new Coke, yeah. Um, he said, "Well, I think I think it's exact." He tweeted out, um, "There's only one Belichick." I'm not sure what. I mean, and then also, what about? Um, yeah, you see um, Kenyon Drake with uh, with uh, googly eyes on the on on his Twitter too. So people people quote people are gonna come for. Um, coaches who cut him and all that stuff like that. Um, not not Eric Harris's part, but um, on definitely on um, Kenyon Drake, who is who who who's on the Ravens right now. So, yeah, I mean, I think this. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you this is if you do, you're 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 100 right about the whole situation. If you do, if you cut, if you do cut, if you after Super Bowl is over and you cut Derek Carr, and you or you or you move Derek Carr, then you're gonna be you're gonna be committed to a rookie quarterback. Who is unless they get Jimmy G, and and try to run it back with Jimmy G, or you know or Brady or somebody like that. Um, 
somebody who quote unquote knows the system, um, then you're you're trusting these guys to do. I can't think that there's not a single move. I've never seen an off season where like they can't hang they can't hang their hat on any move. Like Parham, Vontae, maybe Parham. That's it. That's it. Like I mean, there's nobody else. Like I mean, Mumford's not like taking the job from um from Illuminor, so I can't I can't give him that one. Like it's, you know, it's Blow Nichols doesn't do it for you. No, Nichols, that's my that's my that's my dog right there. But Nichols, no, I'm Ron Harmon. Yeah, Demar. Da, he's that's born. where we have to go. I mean, da, 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 I would if I was on a good team, I would have Dewan, I would have Harmon on my team, and he would just be my safety in the red zone. Because when in space today, whew, that was rough to watch. That was rough. That was rough. That was no speed, no nothing right there, boy. That was crazy. That was crazy. Um, put on Raiders podcast, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Um, I don't know. Here we are. I, I didn't think we'd have to do another head coach and GM search podcast in yeah. December like we did yeah. last year, but yeah. I should probably start doing some research. And yeah. We found some good candidates last year, and there's probably a reason why we never talked about Ziggler or McDaniels because – I, I I didn't have them uh, lining up with the Raiders. I, we'd look a lot better right yeah. now if they would have. Yeah, it's funny. Brian Gables I, doing it, wonders with the Giants. The Giants, the Giants win again. The Giants win again. Um, is is, 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 is there anybody in the Eagles organization you want to grab? <laughs> I mean, somebody, something. I don't know. Uh, I'll start. I mean, we're at that point where <laughs> I, I don't want to do it, but we'll probably start yeah. here early December. I'll yeah. start looking across the league and look for Canada. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. All right, Orient Nation. Um, it's been. It's always fun to talk to y'all. Uh, thank you for the support. Uh, again, the numbers still around sixty and seventy percent of you guys who watch don't subscribe. Just subscribe. It's just it's just press. It's a button you click. It's it's all good. Um, and then um, you'll catch us um later in the week. But um, um who who, who even play next week? Is it Seattle or the Broncos? Broncos. I think right? it's Denver, and we there's a chance we're gonna have a surprise guest uh, on the next recording, and you guys are not gonna want to miss that. Yes, yeah, so we will. So we'll so definitely come to come through for that one. I'm that that's I'm excited about that. So we'll we'll, we'll see what goes on there. But the Raiders are losers again. Um, hopefully that changes um soon. Or and if it doesn't, then hey, you know, let's Bryce let's, Young, baby. let's double check that to make sure it's the Bron. I want to say it's the Broncos. I thought I, I think Seattle had Broncos. The, it was Broncos. Broncos. Okay, Broncos. All right. Broncos, um, so, Seahawks, Chargers, Rams, Patriots, Steelers coming up. And maybe we can get like a little snow. Let's get some snow in Denver. Let's get some, let's get some snow. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. If it can't be, if it can't look good, let it be fun. Let it be fun. All right, Ray Nation. Peace. Thanks, thanks, Ron. Take care. Take care.